All right, let's jump back into our story and make this all a little bit more dynamic. All right, now that we've developed this to be something that can be run in the story where we could enter in a URL in the set URL, but let's actually create some interface for an end user. So what we'll do is we'll hover over tools and then we're gonna pull in a page into our story. Let's set the name of this page to URL analysis form. This page is going to be the interface for our end user. So we can choose to either have this as internal only, or we can check this to make it accessible to public. So internal would just be anybody who has access to your Tynes environment. So if only your immediate team has access, but you want other people in the org to be able to have access, you can toggle on the public. And here you can even set a custom success message. Let's go ahead and enter the values that we want in this page. So on the bottom right hand corner, as we have this page selected, I'm gonna click on edit page. From here on the left hand panel, we'll have a couple different settings that we can work with. By the baseline, we have a header, a paragraph and a button. So I'm gonna click on header and I am going to call this submit URL for analysis. So this is just basically the landing page that someone would get. So we wanna have a clear title of why someone's here. So submit URL for analysis. For the paragraph, please submit to have someone from our security team review your URL. So this is gonna give us some baseline context for whoever the end user is. And the button, I'm going to change it from submit to submit URL. Next, I'm gonna add in an additional element. So we can add in additional headers or paragraphs. We can add dividers if we have separate sections. You can add images, maps, file, tables. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can add. But what we wanna do is we wanna enter in some input fields. This way, users are able to submit that URL and submit the email that we want to reach back out to them on after the URL has been analyzed. So I'll go ahead and select URL. And I'm just gonna delete the one just so it says URL. I'm going to set it as a required field. And you'll notice that this is updating live over here on the right hand side. I'm gonna go click add element and then choose email. And then hit required. And let's also delete that one. If you wanted to, you can set a default value. So default value is kind of giving almost an example, or you can add in helper text. I think email and URL are pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to for this scenario, but I just wanted you to know that you could add in stuff and it shows like kind of grayed out underneath. I don't like the order of this. The button in the middle feels a little bit weird to me. I'm going to click and drag that button all the way to the bottom here. And this is looking pretty good. If I wanted to, I could change the action color and I could change I could change the background too if I wanted. Uh, you can change this from light mode to dark mode. You can add in a logo. So it's kind of fun to mess around with. But for now, this is going to kind of give us what we're looking to accomplish, giving the end user some kind of interface to submit a URL and submit the email that they want us to reach back out to them on. To get back into our story, we can just click in the top left hand corner either you can click the name of your story here or you can just hit the back button now that we have this set up i want to put some sample data into it so i'm going to click in the top right hand corner here this is going to open the form in a new window so go ahead and enter in your test url and your test email and hit submit url and then we'll be met by our submission message Thank you for your submission. All right, now since we've sent in our sample data from the previous page, what we'll wanna do is hook up this page into our story. So let's take that arrow and then plug it into the set URL. Previously for a set URL, we are just entering in our data right here in this purple text. So instead what we'll do is we'll reference it from this page that we have right here. So I'm going to just delete that 
and I'm going to hit this little plus button, click on value, and then I'm going to choose this URL analysis form, and I'm going to do period, body, period, and then URL. So what I'm doing here is I'm building out that JSON structure, referencing it from the previous event. And we have down here on the result in the bottom right hand corner. So I know that it's accurately referencing that data and I'm just going to click off. So now when we have somebody submit a URL using the page, it'll go through, it'll set the, it'll set it to the URL. It will submit it to URL scan. The trigger will happen, the delay, the request to URL scan, grabbing that information. And then we'll have this final email action here. Now the email action right now, it's still referencing my email that I entered in manually, but we wanna actually reference from this URL analysis form. So other than doing the plus button and doing the value, there's another way that we can reference data from the event bar. So what we'll do is click this one in the top right hand corner of this page. We'll see here is the URL analysis form. I'm going to hit these three dots and the three dots under body and where it shows my email right here, this uh, Yanni at Tynes, I'm going to actually double click the word email and what it's going to do, it's going to copy that JSON path, which would be URL analysis form dot body dot email. And you can kind of see how it cascades down, how that structure works. Now that I've double clicked this, I'm going to go down to where my email action is and where my recipient was before. I'm just going to click into that field and then just do command V to paste or control V if you're on windows and you'll see that it enters in that data path. Now the only thing left to do is to re-emit from the page. So I'm going to click on this URL analysis form. I'm going to select this event and then I'm going to hit re-emit. What this is going to do is it's going to take that data that we previously had submitted here and then it's going to pass it to the next action and then pass that event data to the, the next item. Now that the event data has passed through all the actions and has gotten to the email action, let me just check my email to make sure that everything's looking right. Okay, I see here in my email, hello from Tynes. This is the analysis for the URL you submitted. Please check the results below. I see here's the target.com. Obviously it emailed the person that put in the request because that's me and I received the email. And here's all the other information that we had received previously. So pretty cool. So that is how we can implement a front end for whoever our end user is. All right, and that's what we have for today's lesson. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.